Keep it close to your mouth, though. Unfortunately. Yeah. The yeah right. Where is the mask? <laughs> 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 so, so, uh, uh, as as all of you, uh, so say, uh, Jerry was also a very, very dear friend of mine uh, for most of our adult lives, uh, and I want to begin with one property of Jerry uh, that has been implied by everybody but maybe not uh, said explicitly. And this is something that happened when I hardly knew it. Uh, but I was at Penn, I was a graduate student. I was always a graduate student. And uh, uh, I went to here to the philosophy department uh, where Jerry was giving uh, a talk. And this was, I think, in the early 70s. It was somewhat after I had read a, 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 a paper that uh, George took the band uh, by Captain Voder uh, that tried to bring something like a definition of theory uh, into uh, generative grammar. And then I go and I hear this philosophy talk and Jerry uh, talks in quite a different way. So I rang up at the uh, end of the uh, colloquium, and I said, that's very strange uh, that I reading a paper shortly ago, which said just the very opposite of what you were saying uh, today. And the authors were, well, I recall one of them was uh, Jerry Fogg. <laughs> and Jerry said, uh, yes, there is no theory so absurd that I have not maintained it in public sometime. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought this was so nice. So, so the property I wanted to mention was Jerry was also maybe the least defensive person yes. uh, that I uh, oh, ever met. Come on. So you think? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I wanted to mention that. Anyhow, I had, as, as Rochelle was saying, um, I was one of those who had the uh, uh, considerable good fortune uh, of um, uh, doing several uh, uh, seminars uh, uh, with Jerry and other people who are here, Sharon Armstrong. Ernie Lepore, uh, Michelle Gelman, uh, and others over the years uh, with Jerry Fuller either, either attending or uh, being one of the so-called uh, instructors. And I recall that we would always design these seminars uh, very carefully, and they would be about this profound topic or that profound topic. Uh, but I noticed, uh, after some years, that by the second week of the course, in each case, it had turned it into a seminar on how words didn't decompose into their uh, features, or whatever they were. So this, this was an obsession which you know had with Jerry, uh, which had very profound roots. Uh, in the way he thought uh, about human nature uh, and the human conceptual system. And Jerry had a huge effect uh, on everything uh, uh, that I thought and tried to do uh, in language and language acquisition. I actually, when I met uh, Jerry, was something of an innate empiricist. Uh, <laughs> uh, but. I found his argumentation uh, and views uh, uh, of extreme depth uh, and importance uh, 
and uh, They change the way I think. I think. Uh, so, uh, more in the spirit of Jerry, I want to revert uh, to one example uh, because I just love the way Jerry demolished every definition that anybody ever tried to think about. Yeah. Well, maybe you could do Bachelor, but after Bachelor, the theory of definition. Uh, was uh, easy for uh, Jerry to dispense with on the spot. So, because you've heard so many cases, I just want to give you uh, one more. Uh, there was a psychologist, I forget who he was, maybe it was George Miller or somebody like that, who was developing a um, uh, lexical theory and it was uh, a whole bunch of definitions of, of common words, uh, one of which was paint. Uh, paint, the verb paint, uh, which in an uninspiring way <laughs> the psychologist had defined as to cover with paint. But <laughs> <laughs> on the other hand, it sounds like something is right about this. <laughs> something is right about it until Jerry hears it. And, and Jerry immediately demolishes it as follows. He says, uh, consider an explosion in a paint factory. <laughs> Everything is covered paint, with paint. <laughs> which we wouldn't say it was painting the paint. <laughs> so, from this lowly level, Jerry immediately moved to the sublime and turned to the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> and he said, consider Michelangelo. Would you say it was fair to say that what Michelangelo did when he painted the Sistine Chapel was covered the Sistine Chapel so <laughs> Couldn't be fun. but if you know Jerry, that wasn't the topic. Here's the topic. It's so great. He said, in order to paint the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, Michelangelo had to take his paintbrush and dip it into the paint. Right? Thus covering his paintbrush. <laughs> 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 Michelangelo <laughs> painted his paint. <laughs> well, you know, that's it. That doesn't be funny. It's really, if you think about it, it's quite profound. But you don't want to think about it. <laughs> well, here I want to retrieve my book because first I want to, to repeat to you something else. A sentimental inscription. I looked these up. I had all these three books from Jerry. When his book came out, he would give me a copy. Uh, and I'll read to you a uh, sentimental inscription. I pretend I'm reading because I can't see it. <laughs> it says, This very expensive book <laughs> is for Henry and Lila. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I am moved to say this. Good night, sweet prince. May hosts of angels sing thee to thy rest. Jerry Foga, my friend. Thank you.